Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'll share quick and easy Christmas baubles makeovers. For the first makeover you will need silver colored baubles and crashed glass or clear seed beads. First I'm covering the whole ornament with glue. I've tried different options and transparent mounting glue works the best, although you can also use hot glue for this project. I'm coating the whole bobble and dipping it into the crushed glass. I'm pressing the glass to make the surface even and let the ornaments dry well. Of course, the main question you're gonna have is where to get this glass. I'll leave links in the description box for possible options. This kind of glass is used for epoxy resin crafts and also is used as face filler. And I have here the cheapest option, I've bought glass for landscape design. It's super cheap, though I'm not sure this kind of glass is available in the US. After the glue dries, all you have to do is to add suspensions. I don't want to leave the old ones, they look very cheap and kind of spoil the look of the ornaments, so I'm cutting off the holders flush with the main surface. To make a new holder I'm using metal rings and kind of pins made out of wire, here you can use an unbent paper clip also. I'm inserting the pin with the ring into the hole and unbend the pin using a wooden skewer to make the ornament hang on it. Here of course a springy pin would work better. After that I'm filling the hole with hot glue and dipping the ornament into the glass to cover the joint. And we're done! As you can see, this project is really very fast and easy to make. The only thing you should take into account is that the color of the original bobble will be visible through the glass. Keep this in mind when you pick the bubbles for this. My ornaments are silver and light blue and even using such delicate shades you can see the difference in color. By the way, you can use this feature and make icy effect, for example, on a red background. The next technique which I use quite often is all kinds of cast decorations. You can use self-hardening clay for this and better is to use light clay to make ornaments lighter and I'm going to experiment with liquid plastic today. This is a two component plastic, I think it's some kind of resin in fact. You should mix equal parts of components A and B and after that they react and the plastic hardens within 5-10 minutes. The parts are mixed by weight and as all of my molds are quite small, I've mixed 5 or 10 grams of each component. This amount was just enough for making several small casts. So I'm mixing the stuff, first it gets a little bit cloudy but quickly becomes transparent again. Then I'm pouring it into the mold and waiting for about 5 minutes. During this time the cast turns from transparent yellow to milky white. After the casting turns white I'm trying the surface with my finger, at first it will be very sticky and soft and then it becomes less sticky. This is the sign that it's time to pull it out. At this stage the casting is similar to dense jelly or gummy and easily sticks to any curved surface. I'm attaching the casting to the bobble and tying it tightly with any cloth so that it fits snugly until it fully sets. Some brands like Smooth On allow to make the casts flexible again if put into hot water, but mine doesn't do that. If the mold is shallow and the casting is not thick, you do not need to tie it, it will hold as is. After the cast hardens, you can glue it to the ornament using any contact glue or hot glue. By the way, I haven't said it earlier, of course, as when working with resin you should wear gloves and a mask. In general, I like the material, it's not too difficult to work with it and it's quicker than making casts out of self-hardening clay. And the castings are very nice and clean, with all the smallest details of the relief visible. And also they are shutterproof, which is good for ornaments. And also liquid plastic turned out to be quite economical, I have small bottles and this was enough for many, many experiments, so although the price for it may seem quite high, one set will let you work for a very long time. 
But as I have already said, you can also use self-hardening clay for this project. After attaching the casts, I'm painting the ornaments. I'm going to be making vintage style baubles to fit the decorations I made last year. And I'm using my favorite combo – red, green and bronze. First I'm painting the whole baubles. Here I'm using homemade chalk paints. I'll leave the link for the video with my recipe. Chalk paints are great here because you can paint without primer, but you can also use acrylic primer and acrylic paints for this. I let them dry and apply in the second layer of the main color. And after that, I'm applying brown paint around all the decorations while the main paint is still wet. And then I'm blending everything well. This provides a very nice aged look, very delicate and the ornaments wouldn't look kind of dirty, which may happen if you use dark wax or a dark pattern. After that I'm painting the casts. I'm painting all the leaves green and making bows and berries red and the like. I've left a couple of baubles plain green, although of course green on green is not the brightest combination, but I want to use these ornaments not on the Christmas tree, but in some table arrangements. I'm also highlighting some of the decor with a dry brush using bronze paint to add some shine to the bubbles. And I'm decorating the crown with small pearls. This is a special pearl paint, I will also link the link for it, it's a great thing for such a decor. And finally, I'm going to change the hangers. The old shiny and plastic ones don't go with the vintage bubbles. First, I'm cutting the tube of the ornaments. For the hangers, I'm gonna use these caps with a loop. I've bought them on AliExpress and I'm attaching rings for hanging to them. I'm inserting a thin ribbon into the hole in the bobble. You can use any thread, it's just for glue to stick better. I'm filling the hole with hot glue and attaching the cap. Such a press hanger looks way better. And this is how they turned out. I think they look great on a vintage styled Christmas tree. By the way, you can also make very posh bubbles using the same technique if you cover the bubbles with velvet and spray paint plastic costings gold and decorate them with rhinestones, ribbon and lace to your taste. The third option for quink bubbles upgrade is using gold leaf. I'm sanding the seams on the bubbles lightly, the seams is what gives out plastic. After that I'm covering the bubbles with gilding glue and let it sit for 5 minutes until the glue becomes transparent. And then I'm going to wrap the bubble in a sheet of gold leaf, or here actually silver leaf. You can use any color of gold leafing that you like. First I'm attaching the sheet to the bubble and gently parting with a brush so that the gold leaf sticks to the surface well. Of course, you're going to get lots of creases here, but this is okay, the surface is actually looking better with them, so don't worry. After the bubbles are all wrapped, I let them sit for about 20 minutes more to let the glue dry and then I'm polishing the ornaments. I like using a cotton pad for doing this, because you don't need a special polishing brush there.
After that you can paint the ornaments using glass paints to get a look very similar to antique cracked glass ornaments. Do not use very dark colors here, this time I've tried a dark green color and I don't really like it, it looks too dark. And amber or red painted ornaments look great. I have already made pumpkins in this technique this fall, do you remember? Today I have a number of self repeats, so to say, using the techniques that I have already shown to you in other videos. The other option is just sealing the ornaments after you gold leaf them. Here I've decided to make several baubles using variegated golden leaf. It was sitting in my closet for ages, but now I think it's time for it to walk. And I think the baubles are perfect for showing it off. A simple shape where the pattern is clearly visible. I've bought this gold leaf on AliExpress. I will leave the links in the description box on it. Here I'm doing the same as I have already shown, except for on a large bobble I'm using two leaves to get a symmetrical pattern on the sides, where it looks like a star. I'm also tapping the finished bobbles with a brush so that the gold leaf adheres well to the entire surface and after the glue dries I'm polishing it with a cotton pad. Finally, I'm sealing it. Here I'm using a transparent glass medium. This is a cheaper option than a special gilding sealer. All that is left is to make hangers for the bubbles. Here I'm doing exactly the same as with the previous ones. I'm cutting off the tubes, hot gluing the ribbons inside and attaching the cap with the ring on top. My favorites here are, of course, the gold pattern baubles. I think they look very modern and sleek. I'm thinking of making a large set of these baubles. We'll finish up the booklet of this variegated gold leaf. A great thing about this kind of ornaments is that thanks to the neutral color, they will suit any color scheme on a tree. But even plain gold, silver or copper baubles will look nice on a Christmas tree. Due to folds and creases, they look much more interesting than smooth plastic ones. And if you choose to paint them, you'll get a very nice vintage style set. For the next makeover I'll be using large bubbles from Dollar Tree, there are rhinestones and glitter over them and for a start I'm getting rid of all this splendor with a cotton swab and acetone or nail polish remover. It is, it is rubbing off with some effort but it provides less mess than sending this off as I did last. Further, you should prime the bubbles in the color of the future coating. I didn't have the right colors on hand and didn't prime, which I've regretted. Even a brown paint would go to cover the shine. So don't be like me and prime the ornaments first using some dark color. Then I'm going to cover them with flocking powder and first I'm covering the bubbles with glue. Here I've tried different options and I like most latex glue here. The flock adheres to it perfectly, contact glue also works well, but it turns yellow over time. I think you can also try using Mod Podge here, although I haven't tried it myself. After that I'm sprinkling the ornament with flocking powder through a strainer. I'm using a floor strainer here, it works like a charm. Be sure to lay down a large mat or a newspaper so that you could collect the excess later easily. Let the ornaments dry well. Usually one layer turns out to be too thin for me and so I'm making the second layer. I'm covering it with glue right onto the first layer of flocking and sprinkling it again. When working with flocking powder be sure to wear a mask or better respirator and wear gloves because the powder can paint your hands. When I've poured the flock I've touched it with my bare hands and now I've got pale blue nails and it doesn't go away. By the way you can mix different colors of flocking, for example my turquoise is a mixture of light green, blue and brown, thus you can get beautiful saturated shades. After drying I'm attaching holders to the bubbles as I have already shown. Here on the violet bubble it is clearly visible in the shooting lights that the surface still shines through, which is why I advised you to prime it before flocking, though in the real life this is much less visible. 
You can leave the bubbles as they are or you can add some more decor. Here I've decided to paint snowflakes with glitter contour paint. And I have also added pearls with the pearl paint that I have used for the crown before. This time I'm using a bronze color. And the second option is to add a nice vintage feel. I'm drawing curvy lines on the bobble using contour paint, trying to make nice curves. I'm waiting for the paint to dry, then I'm taking cheap rhinestone stickers from Dollar Tree and peeling off the oblong transparent rhinestones from it. I'm hot gluing these rhinestones on the ornament to make kind of leaves on painted lines. Here you can experiment with the pattern, add flowers or use only the leaves, make the foliage thicker or sparser. I've made quite a lot of leaves here and this masks the gaps in the flocking perfectly. You can leave the rhinestones as they are, they already look very nice, but I've decided to repeat the technique that I tried on the peacock in the video about further ornaments. And so I'm outlining the rhinestones with a contour paint to make them look as if they are inserted into a metal cast. As you can see, you can make very different ornaments using this technique. Dark blue bubbles are very trendy, modern and minimalistic. They are great for a Scandinavian Christmas tree, for example. And the ornament decorated with rhinestones, on the contrary, looks very vintage. I would say like a Victorian one. I really like how the pattern looks here. If you don't want to mess with the flocking, you can make a similar pattern on a smooth mud bobble or you can also wrap the bobble in velvet. It will also look nice. So, first of all, I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas, which is coming very soon. I think many, many of you have the situation when you take out the box with your Christmas baubles and you understand that you don't like them anymore or they don't suit the theme of Christmas tree which you are going to make this year or maybe you just want something new because you're a little bit bored of older ones. So I hope my today's ideas will help you to upgrade your older Christmas tree ornaments or maybe you could make new ones from some cheap and plain Christmas baubles like from Dollar Tree or something. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!